Zapping Mouse Shop is I Tesla Mouse here, your coach in Houston Right Shoes, and this is our week one team builder for the Saffron Bell Network, a draft league owned by EXP Awesome, who's a great streamer on Twitch. In our first week in the SBN, we are taking on the Wiccan or the Wigan Wingles or the Wigan Wingles. I'm not sure how it's pronounced, but that is gonna be coached by Ace. Now his roster is very threatening, so let's go over it real quick. If you look at the bottom left-hand corner, he has for tier one Victini, tier two Slowbro, tier three Jolteon and Crocodile, tier four Hitmontop, tier five Steelix. Um, for his points, he has Salamis, Mega Medicine, Delmice, Pinsir, and Weezing. The thing about this roster is that his Mega Medicine hits really hard. He has two great hazard removers in Hitmontop and Delmice. With a couple of Stealth Rock setters in Pinsir, Steelix, and Crocodile, and a Toxic Spike setter in Weezing. So he has got a lot of options to work with on his team. He's also got Victini on his roster and Salamence as a Z move user. Remember, you're allowed one Z move user in this league, and it can use Z Sass moves, excluding Evasiveness and Omni Boost. So, going over a team here, I realize that. He has a Jolteon, which is a wicked fast mon, it's his fastest mon there, and he has a couple of potential Scarfers, such as Crocodile, uh, Victini, and even Salamence. Also, Pinsir, if he does bring it, could be Choice Scarf, so what I want to do here is I want to bring a couple of Scarfers of my own, or at least one Scarfer, and I chose the fastest Scarfer of them all, um, Tapacoco. So we're going to be bringing TK Ryo the Tapacoco here, with the move Thunderbolt, Volt Switch, Dazzling Gleam, and U-Turn, packing 56 HP. 252 special attack and 200 or two yeah 200 speed. This isn't really des designed to speed creep anything in particular. However, what it is meant to do is give it a little bit more HP survivability from stealth rocks and whatnot with its HP investment. A 200 speed Tap Coco Scarf will outspeed a plus one Salamence. So we get a little bit of damage off on a Salamence can just um, come in and finish off with Dazzling Gleam and take it out. This is also designed to speed. To outspeed, you know, non-scarfed Jolteon, uh, scarfed Victini, scarfed Pinsir even. And I felt that having scarfed Tapacoco on the team was definitely very important. We are running Thunderbolt and Voltorch for a electric, electric terrain boosted stab. Dazzling Gleam is also there for a stab. Because nothing on his roster, barring Weezing or Hip um, or Steelix, can uh, resist Dazzling Well, actually, let me rephrase that. Nothing on his roster, barring Weezing, Steelix, or Victini. Resist um, Dazzling Gleam. And I don't think he wants to switch Victini into an, a potential electric train boost of Thunderbolt from Tapacoco. And I don't think he would want to switch Weezing into Tapacoco because Weezing is not that great on the special defensive side, and a electric train boost of Thunderbolt may do a shit ton of damage to it. So again, I am running Tapacoco Scarf with the anticipation that he'll be running Choice Scarf Victini or Choice Scarf Riddle or even Choice Scarf. Pinsir. I don't see him bringing Choice Scarf Salamence. I think it'd be better off as a D Dance user. Especially since it will be bearing the Z Stone. And also, Tapico is great against. Tapico is awesome against the majority of dra his draft. It's good against Slowbro. It's good against Crocodile. It's good against Hitmontop. Good against Salamence. Uh, Mega Medicine. Barring Fake Out plus Bullet Punch. Good against Pinsir and Weezing. So, Scarf Coco does seem like the set to bring here. And that is why we are running it. Also, we got a U-turn for non-stab pivoting that won't trigger Jolteon's Volt Absorb or get blocked by Crocodile or Steelix. So that's, we have U-turn and Volt Switch both his pivoting moves here. That way, if he has no like electric immunities left, we can just Volt Switch with Stab and Electric Train and just get a switch into whatever counteracts his switch. And U-turn's there in case he still has Crocodile, Steelix, or Jolteon left, so we don't have to you know, get blocked by one of them when you go for Volt Switch. So that is what I'm bringing on my Tapu Coco. Next up we have La Jin, the mystical genie of the lamp. Except not really, it's La Jin, the Hoopa Unbound. We are packing a choice band on it with Hyperspace Fury, Zen Headbutt, Knockoff, and Ice Punch. There are two mods and only two mods on his roster. This is not why I take a banded um, Hyperspace Fury. Those would be, I mean, there's only two mods on the roster that can really switch into a banded Hyperspace Fury. And that's Crocodile, assuming it has Intimidate and Hitmontop. A Hyperspace Fury will basically one-shot, if not, well, pretty much one-shot anything that switches into it. Like Mega Man Chan, um, Delmai, Slowbro, Victini, etc. It'll two-shot Weezing, most likely. 
But him on top and Cornell will be his best possible switch-ins for the uh, Power Space Fury attack. Assuming, of course, um, Cornell does have Intimate. Let's go over some Kelks, though. Let's uh, see how much non-Intimate Crocodile will take from the Choice Bandit Hyperspace Fury here. It'll take... It will actually... Hold on a sec. It'll take a maximum of 57 to 67.6% damage from a, a Bandit Hyperspace Fury. And I don't think he wants to switch his Crocodile in and have its health get depleted. So if he's going to anticipate a physical Hoopa Unbound, then bringing Hit on top of Intimidate as well as Crocodile would definitely be in his best interest here. Uh, defensive Slow Road though, let's see, are you Defensive Call Mine? We'll pretty much get one shot by Choice Van Hyperspace Fury. Bikini, I'm pretty sure we'll get one shot as well. And Jolteon is weak on the physical defensive side, so that will be taken out. Salamence, unless it's into if he doesn't want to switch into a Hyperspace Fury that's Choice Banded, as you can see here from these Celts. Yeah, basically Hyperspace Fury just destroys a lot of his team. We do still have to worry though, because we're going to have to switch out after we knock something out of Hyperspace Fury. And we especially that minus one defense, we do know that Mega Man can come in and just threaten our Koopa Unbound now. And I am anticipating him threatening our Hoopa Undone out with Salamence. So, if we have to make a risky play there, keeping Hoopa in on his Salamence, to prevent him from setting up a Dragon Dance, that's pretty good. But it is a very risky play to make. So, hopefully, we don't have to come to that situation. The next one on our roster is going to be Space Mama the Rotom Wash. Now, normally I'd be running a physically defensive set, but honestly, I have no real good switches to Jolteon. Especially in the electric terrain, so I decided to run a specially defensive Rotom Wash for him. We are running 240 HP, 8 defense, and 252 special defense with a calm nature. It is going to be Volt Switch, Hydro Pump, Will O Wisp, and Pain Split with leftovers. If he brings the Jolteon, we're going to lead off with Rotom Wash because we don't want to get the electric terrain started too early and power up Jolteon's Life Orb or Choice Specs Boosted Stab. That would not be good. But running some Kelks here, let's go over to Rotom Wash real quick. Assuming we're not in the electric terrain, Jolteon's Thunderbolt will do a maximum of 39.7 to 47.4% damage on Rotom Wash. It'll be a guaranteed 3 hit KO, so we can either hit Jolteon off a Hydro or get a Pain Split off, or something like that. Volt Switch will be like 30.7 to 37.1, Trail Ball will be 23 to 28.2, and HP Ice will be 8.9 to 10.8. I do expect him to bring, instead of Shadow Ball, like Signal Beam to hit Hoopa Unbound and Hintar Ice to hit Gligar. If we're in the Electric Terrain though, which is something we definitely have to watch out for, Jolteon's Thunderbolt will actually be a guaranteed 2 hit KO. It'll be 60.2 to 70.5. Volt Switch will be a 24.6% chance to 2 hit KO after Leftover Recovery. It'll do 47.4 to 55.7. This Jolteon is going to be a huge threat because of my, my Tapu Koko's ability backfiring on it with the Electric Terrain. But I do still think we have a way to deal with it, so... As long as we can whittle down the Jolteon and figure out what kind of item it's holding, and get its HP down reasonably enough, uh, we can probably do some damage with Tapu Koko later on. Let's also run some Kelks here with a Jolteon all-out attacker. In the Electric Terrain, Jolteon Thunderbolt will be a 2 hit KO on Tapu Koko. It'll do a maximum of 65.7% damage if it's life orb. If the Jolteon is choice specs here, then it will do 63.8 to 75.6% damage. Now we run the calcs here after Jolteon does strike our Tapu Koko out and we figure out um, how much damage it's doing. Then we can scope out the item on it. Like I said, most likely I believe it will bring either Life Orb or Choice Specs to Jolteon, if he is. And there's honestly no reason not, for him not to bring Jolteon in this battle, because it does kind of give him an extra electric community in a way, while also doing serious damage on my team. And again, that Hymn Power Ice on my Gligar, if wants to bring Gligar, Hymn Power Ice would definitely be the uh, way to deal with it. So that is uh, one reason why I'm not bringing Gligar. I don't see Gligar having a purpose in this match. The next mod that we are bringing is going to be Zero Find the Cryagonal. We are running Max Special Attack, 36 Special Defense, and 220 Speed with Leftovers. 
Freeze Dry, Knock Off, Rapid Spin, and Recover. We got Freeze Dry for Stab and to get super effective damage on water types such as Slowbro. We have Knock Off to predict the switch. If he switches into uh, Victini on our Cragonal expecting a Freeze Dry, we click Knock Off. We can knock off the item off of Victini and see if it was, if it was either Choice Bandit or Choice Scarf or whatnot. If he for some reason switches Slowbro, I mean not Slowbro, Salamence into Cragonal as we go for a Knock Off. Then, if we knock off an item, we'll know that he's not the Z-Move user, and if we don't knock off an item, we'll know that he is packing a Z-Crystal. Now, Cragonal is not supposed to be a physical attacker, of course, but knock off is a good way to get rid of items, and I feel like getting rid of items would be a good idea in this battle, because I do want to scope out what stuff like Crucial, Victini, Pinsir, and Salamence and such are using. You're riding 220 speed to basically speed creep Salamence here. I'm going to show you that. Cryagon will be speed creeping Jolly Max Speed Salamence. If we can do this. Alright, so at level 50, Salamence, Jolly Salamence will be packing 167 speed points or for its stat after the 252 speed IV or EVs rather. Cragon of 220 speed EVs will be packing 168 speed total, which is one point higher than Salamis. So assuming he does not get a D-Dance off, we can basically outspeed it and go for the freeze dry and kill off the Salamis or hit something else that potentially switches in. Now if he does have Victini, I might want to consider going for a knockoff, but that could be risky if he if I overpredict and he turns out not to send not to switch out his um Salamence. And it basically kills off my Kragonal. Because let's be honest here, Kragonal has booty physical defense. It has Base 50 special defense. Cryagonal speed, special defense, and special attack stat is where it really thrives. Now doing some calcs here for slow bro. Are you defense or are you defensive we'll say? Freeze dry is gonna be a two-hit KO on it, 56.4 to 66.3% damage. Skull will do next to nothing. Side shock will actually be a two-hit KO because of Cryagonal's uh, crappy physical defense. Keep in mind that Psy Shock does hit on the physically defensive side, so even though it's a special attack, it will target your special defense, or your physical defense rather. And also, we got Recover on Cryagonal, basically to recover HP in addition to the leftovers, in case we take some rocks damage from it, or if we take some, or if we sponge some special attacks with it. And Rapid Spin goes out saying, I'm not really sure if he'll bring a Hazard Setter or not. But in case he does, we do have Rapid Spin, and I know that he's not going to want to try to spin block our Cryagonal of Delmize, because if he was to do that, he'd be risking a Freeze Dry on it. So, Delmize is not exactly the best switch into Cryagonal, in my opinion. Part of me did want to bring Glygar as a Hazard Remover, but for the, mention, for the reasons mentioned before, Glygar can't really do much to his team at all. Can't do much to Weezing, can't... It'll get by by a Life Orb, a Choice of Vaccine Power Ice from Jolteon. It won't do shit to Slowbro. So, the matchup just did not favor Glagger this week, and that's why I chose Cryagonal over it. Next mod that we are bringing is going to be Yellow Gadget to Jirachi. We are packing Iron Head, Thunder Wave, Wish, and Protect with 248 HP, 144 Defense, 84 Special Defense, and 32 Speed. We are running an Impersage with the Akaberry on it. And the reason why is to basically deal with the Victini. Now, if we go here to these Celts real quick. We're going to see what Victini will do to a Choice Banded Victini. Or what Jirachi, how Jirachi will take a Choice Banded Victini. Jirachi can actually survive with the Alkaberry. A Choice Banded Victini's V-Crate. 74.2 to 87.8% damage to the Jirachi. And then we can get a T-Wave off and have our Hoopa Unbound basically outspeed the Victini. And then kill it from Hyperspace Fury later. If here is a Choice Scarf Victini, then... V Crate will do 49.5 to 58.7% damage. We can just get a T Wave off, paralyze that. He has no possible clerics on his roster either, if you, if you take a look at this. Because nothing on his team gets Heal Bell that I'm aware of, except for Jolteon, but I find it highly unlikely they'd run like Heal Bell on something offensively powerful like that. You're better off just running four attacks on Jolting instead of trying to run Heal Bell, so I don't really have to worry about that. The one problem with this Jirachi set is it's a physically defensive set instead of a specially defensive set, so we can't really tank hits from Jolteon. 
But we do got a team with the Paralyzed stuff like Mega Medchan, um, Victini, Pinsir, and maybe even got a pair of flinch off on Weezing as dirty as that is. And Victini being also physical, or a Jirachi rather, being physically defensive means that we can take hits from Delamires. A lot better if we were the especially defensive variant. So are you an offensive spinner? Let's see what happens here. So yeah, Shell Claw wouldn't actually benefit us. But if this was a Spooky Claw Delmize, it'd do like a maximum of 73.7% damage. However, it would be a it'd do a maximum of 61.1% damage to Jirachi. So basically what we do is if we come to a 1v1 situation, we go for Wish, we go for Shell Claw, and then we just keep um we're selling the Shell Claws out. Or if I want, felt really cheeky and lucky, I'd go for Iron Head and basically flinch it. A 32 speed investment on the Jirachi, it will outspeed 84 speed invested Delmize. And last but not least, we have Puppet Master the Mega Bayonet. Now, this is a risky bring for me personally, but what's going to happen here is I'm going to bring this solely to deal with stuff like Pinsir and. Mega Man Chan. I need something to switch into Mega Man Chan reliably, and Mega Bayonet is that. Will OS, Knockoff, Shadow Sink, and Cotton Guard will be this set with 188 HP, 252 attack, 68 defense with the adamant nature. We got Will OS to burn stuff like Meta Chan and Delmize and other physical attackers like Pinsir. We got Knockoff to basically hit Crocodile on the switch and get rid of its item. We got Shadow Sink for priority stab. We have Cotton Guard to raise. Mega Bayonet speed by three, or not speed, but defense by three stages. So it can uh, not get bodied by Pursuit from Crocodile. Now I know that will o -Wisp will probably, will not work in Crocodile due to the new Prankster nerf. However, priority moves that target Bayonet, target itself, like Cotton Guard, should still go through while Crocodile is on the field. So if we feel like we're going to be Pursuit trapped by it, we'll just Cotton Guard up, get a plus three in defense, and then we can switch out no problem at all while scoping out what kind of move Crocodile is going to go for. So that is the team that we are bringing against Ace in week one of the SBN. We are running once again to review Thunderbolt, Will Switch, Dazzling Gleam, and U-Turn on TK Ryo, the Tapu Koko, Choice Scarf with 56 HP, max special attack, 200 special um, speed, pardon me. Then we got Lajin, the Hoopa Unbound, Hyperspace Fury, Zen Headbutt, Knockoff, and Ice Punch with the Choice Band, 44 HP, 252 attack, 212 speed. This is an outspeed Paralyzed Scarf Victini and plus one Paralyzed Salamence. Then we have Space Mama the Rotom Wash with Calm Nature, 240 HP, 8 Defense, 252 Special Defense with Leftovers, Volt Search, Hydro Pump, Willow Us, and Pain Splat. One thing to know about this, prior to this match, I was actually planning to bring Thunder Wave Rotom Wash to basically spread the paralysis around, but I ultimately decided to go with Willow Us because honestly, anything that I would want to paralyze with Rotom Wash that's faster, such as uh, Mega Man could basically two shot this Rotom Wash and fake it on High Jump Kick and that just didn't seem like the optimal status move to bring. It also cannot paralyze Crocodile or Jolteon, so it seemed like overall will OS was the best play here, or the best decision in here, so we can spread the chip damage and the burns around. But again, Volt Switch, Hydro Pump, will OS, and Pain Splat. Next we got Zero Find the Cryagonal, Freeze Dry, Knock Off, Rapid Spin Recover with 252 Special Attack, 36 Special Defense, 220 Speed with Leftovers. Yellow Gadget to Jirachi, Impish Nature with the Akaberry, 240 HP, 144 Defense, 84 Special Defense, and 32 Speed, Iron Head, Thunder Wave, Wish, and Protect. And last but not least, Puppet Master the Mega Bayonet, 180 HP, um, 252 Attack, 68 Defense, will o -Wisp, Knock Off, Shadows, and Cotton Guard. Now, the reasons why I didn't bring stuff like Gligar, Gligar, because it honestly does nothing to his roster, it cannot switch into a Victinus V-Create, it gets bodied by Mega Man Chan's Ice Punch, it gets bodied by Slowbro, Jolteon's Hidden Power Ice. The only thing that Vi that Gligar would be really um, useful for against would be the Crocodile and the, the Pinsir, but Knockoff is a thing on both those mods, and getting rid of my Gligar's Eviolite would kind of suck. Mega Pidgeot's not going to be used in this spell because it does not outspeed Jolteon. Um, Scarf Stone Edge from Crocodile will definitely hit it, guaranteed because of No Guard. It'll take it out. What it could be useful against though, for Mega Pidgeot, is basically getting some special attack damage off of off on Slowbro, Pinsir, and Weezing. But overall, Mega Pidgeot did not seem worth it. 
Haxorus, it gets kind of walled out by Slowbro. So that's not really a, a great... That would not be a great decision for me to bring it. It can heal... It can handle some of his other mons, though. It can handle the Jolteon if it's at plus one. It can handle the Victini. It can handle the Steelix, even. And the Salamence. But what I'm worried about is basically being walled out by Slowbro. So... Um, Haxorus was not... Was actually Nyx in favor of something like Cryagonal as well. So, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed the season the season one week one team build of the SBN. We are taking on Ace of the Wigan Wingles, or the Wigan Wingles. I'm not really sure how to pronounce it. I do sincerely apologize. But either way, if you guys enjoyed this fantastic team builder, leave a like, comment, and please send the subscribe button. And I'll catch you guys on the flip side for some more fantastic draft league action. Now remember, keep riding the Thunderwaves to victory. Okay, thanks, bye.